Mmm. Mmm. This one's so good. How about this one? Mmm. This one also. Mmm. Mm, and this one. <laughs> you know you're supposed to spit it out after every tasting, right? Really? What happens? What happens if I don't? That's what tasting is about. You don't oh. get yourself drunk. Welcome back to Chasing the Sun. I'm Janie. This week, we're bringing you along to a special private VIP wine tasting that we are doing with Sean Salam, the owner of VV Lounge, La Stella, and La V Pin Wineries. We'll dive into three of the best whites and three of the best reds from each winery. But before we get into actual wines, we'll give you a quick lesson of how to properly taste wine with Ian Phillip with Barbarian Wine Consultant. He's the certified instructor teaching WSET wine courses. Now let's get into it. So now we have the honor of Ian Phillips with Barbarian Wine Consulting. He teaches WSET wine courses, and uh, both Jane and I were in his wine class. Love the content, a lot of fun. Those of you interested in learning about wine, definitely look up his webpage. And what is that? It's www.barbarianwine.com. Exactly. Lots of good stuff on there. Many different WSET courses at whatever level that you want. We're really just doing it for the fun of it. You can do it for fun of it, or you can actually work towards a path, right? To be absolutely for certification and whatever level, whatever, whether you're in the trade or just the consumer, it's an appropriate, uh, uh, fun way to learn about wine. Exactly. So now, what Ian will share with us is just some quick tips on how to properly taste wine. For those of you going to wineries and just trying to experience it, there's an actual proper way of doing it. So please share. Sure, I just want to spend a few minutes talking about uh, tasting wine as opposed to drinking wine. Uh, so tasting wine is, is really, it, it, it's drinking wine but while paying attention. So the main thing here is when, when we're uh, confronted with a new wine, it's always important to approach it in the same way. We call this a systematic approach to tasting. So we always do three things and we do it in the same order. We always look at the wine first and we often, uh, uh, the best situation would be able to look at the wine against a neutral white back, uh, white background, so that we can see uh, the color. Uh, and the second thing we would do is smell the wine. So uh, putting our nose into the glass, swirling the glass to release more of the aroma, so that we get the full intensity of the wines and smell the wine again. Uh, and then. Uh, paying attention to what we're smelling, how intense it is, what the aromas are, etc., etc. And the third thing we do is taste the wine. So it's always look, smell, and then taste. And when we taste the wine, we would take a small sip. Hold it in our mouth and breathe air over top of it to release all of the aromas and flavors. And when we're tasting wine, I know this may sound sad, is that we actually, we spit it out as opposed to swallowing it. Particularly if you want to be in a professional environment, maybe you're at a tasting where there are dozens or even hundreds of wines to try, you can't drink them all. <laughs> so, it's, so, so it's really, really, really important to learn and feel comfortable about using the spittoons and spitting. It's absolutely what you're supposed to do. There should be no embarrassment in, in doing that. And so when we taste it, we just focus on the different elements in the wine, um, and, and we do that every time we try a different wine. Right. Thank you so much. These are just the tip of it. If you want to dive into proper wine tasting with the notes and all of that, look onto his webpage and uh, check out one of his courses.
are so honored today to be having a private wine tasting at Vivi Lounge with La Sella Wine and Le Pan. The owner, uh, Sean, is here and I'd like to just introduce him. Hi everyone, uh, I had a chance to be here tonight, enjoy the company of our friends, giving me the opportunity to open up the, some of our wines and introduce them to the uh, few wine that might not have uh, had the chance to drink. Uh, Eric, Jenny, Marco, thank you so much for coming. We're gonna enjoy the evening and think about you guys. Uh, please come by anytime, come and see us and we would love to uh, treat you for a similar or even better, you know, uh, night uh, that we have here. Nice. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Cheers, to that. Yeah. cheers, cheers guys. To that. Salud. Thank you. Salud. 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 Cheers. Yeah. So, so we're going to taste from your left to your right here. So on the left, uh, your first white wine is uh, from Mostella. So uh, we're talking about Mostella, the Vipan Mostella being kind of modeled after uh, Italian grape varieties and Italian styles, and then the Vipan being uh, the French kind of sister winery. So uh, this particular Pinot you know, Grigio is. It's kind of modeled under northern Italian, so we're talking a crisp, really clean, really bright acidity, fantastic food wine. It's going to go beautiful with that burrata, uh, lively, uh, 2019 vintage. Uh, so uh, that's wine number one. In wine number two, we move over to uh, the Le Pin side. So it is the Ava. So Ava is Rhone varietal, so the Rhone Valley in France. Uh, this, they've been making this particular blend since 2009. Uh, this is the first vintage where Roussan has been a dominant grain. So 51% of this particular blend is Roussan with Viognier and uh, Marsan uh, playing back. And that was just because 2018, the Roussan, they were really excited about. Uh, so definitely a little bit more fuller body than the Vivace. Uh, but yeah, beautiful, rich. I get, a, I get a ton of peach and uh, kind of stone fruit from, from that Viognier and the Roussan. And then the third wine, uh, and this has only been done three times by, by the Vipin, this is uh, their 100% Roussan. So the same vintage 2018, that beautiful Roussan they were excited about to make the, the lead grape and the Ava, they also bought of 100% Roussan. So you get all that beautiful richness uh, and, and weight and structure. And, yeah, you guys are going to love all three. It's an uh, organic grape uh, we bought from... Uh a grower that we've been working with them for many years. And uh, the wine speaks for itself. Consumer friendly, easy drinking. It has everything to enjoy, especially in the summer. It can go wrong. You can have any seafood, any light, you know, cheeses. It's delicious. Okay. Mm. Yes. As but Chase described, you yeah. can actually taste the peach in this uh, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, the stone fruit. Yeah, yes, yes, yes definitely. A, so Ava is classic. Rhone Valley, Viognier, Marsan, yes. Rosan. Simply a percentage of what grape is better that vintage. The alcohol changes this mean. Either it was a cold weather, it was a warm weather, it was more sun, it was more rain, it was dry, it was wet. So everything changes. So you gotta understand, macroclimate climate has a huge effect of growing grape. Therefore, when you have the grape ready to pick, will dictate what's gonna be in the bottle. So let's try Abo, Rhone Valley style, Viognier, Marsan, Rosan. Every given year is a different so percentage. It's a different percentage. Yeah, you, same guys, you guys have the last one we're gonna try is Rosan. Is the most difficult grape that we can work with, and it's, it's only made 50 case. This is all we, we make for the whole season, and the wine is speak for itself. It has all the Rome Valley uh, flavor taste that you can imagine. This is white wine for the red wine drinker. Yeah, that's that's right. how I call it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It is a full body white wine. Wow. Wow. Actually, yeah, I, I can the, see what you mean by when you have somebody that is eating something that would normally be okay. Yeah, we would normally pair a red wine with this particular dish. Yes. And they're like, I don't drink red wine. I don't yes. drink white. This yeah. is the type of style wine that I would go to. Yeah. Let's pour you this. You're gonna love it. It's not. It's still gonna stand up. 
It's got the weight to stand up and the structure to stand up to dishes like it's that. The for the for the res, we're going to start with the V pin, and then we'll do uh, the Stella afterwards. Sure. But, uh, what I love about kind of the V pin, and, and I know Sean's probably talked about Severine Pant, who's the winemaker, and she's so celebrated in the Okanagan Valley. And uh, one of the things that she's very celebrated for is how she showcases the Syrah grape. Right? Uh, so uh, wine number one on your left is Cuvée Violette. So it, you, uh, I mean, with the, the Grand Pin, which is our second wine here, four or five different versions of, of Syrah. Uh, and when you taste it next to Le Grand Pin, which is the second wine in the glass, uh, this is Le Grand Pin, and, and I don't even, we don't even have tasting notes for it because it's, uh, it's so exclusive and it's the only, it's only the second time it's ever been done. All the fruit is coming from the estate in Oliver at the View Pen, and I just tried it uh, when I was opening up these bottles. And such a lovely, uh, kind of peppery, rustic, definitely full, rich, and structured in comparison. So you've got kind of it's fun to taste them side by side. The the violet with kind of the yeah the more elegant fruit version, and then kind of the big structured pepper, dark fruit version in uh, Le Grand Pin, which is the second wine, and then the Retouche. Uh, as Sean was saying, it's his, his favorite. There is a there's a term called hermitaging, and this was kind of comes from the 1800s in Bordeaux, and this is kind of what this this wine pays homage to. So Bordeaux, you have to have a certain amount of grapes, as you would have learned from from eating in the class. Uh, you have Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, uh, Malbec, Petit Verdot, and Merlot are the kind of the only grapes that you can grow and put in a bottle of Bordeaux and call it Bordeaux. In the 1800s, what they would do is they would steal a bit of Syrah from Hermitage and Rome Valley and sneak it into the blend and, and wouldn't tell anybody because you weren't legally allowed to do it. But it would add this beautiful kind of structured richness and roundness and, and kind of floral notes and pepper notes. And so what, what this wine is, is those Bordeaux varieties, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon. But they've thrown some of that Syrah in there as well, which obviously the deep end is known for. And I mean, you, you be the judge, but it's uh, yeah, certainly one of my favorite wines in the lineup as well. Uh, this is so beautiful. Uh, on the left hand side here, this is the Elk Gutenberg. Uh, we have a beef salami, Berkshire ham over on this side. And then the, uh, the three different cheeses this is a triple cream uh, brie style cheese. We have a, uh, a goat cheddar right here, right here, yeah. And then we, uh, this is a sheep and cow. Thank you. Enjoy. And by the way, all the pickles here is housemade. The mustard is a housemade. The jam is a housemade. They're the most delicious pickle, jam, and mustard that you can have. And I invite you to try them all. So these are the three reds from La Stella. Yes. yes. Italian stuff. Fortissimo, espressivo. Classico di Osorius. This is a very new mm, yeah. bottle of wine. I don't think I've heard of that wine from years before. Yeah. A, a very uh, new wine and uh, first year, first vintage. Oh. Cheers to you guys. Beautiful. Thank Let's you. Let's taste vintage. how it is, then we go talk about it. 50% Sangiovese, 17% mm. Cap Soft, 17% Cap Franc, 16% Melo. Mm. And it's delicious. I do, I do like it. It's delicious. This is a baby uh, we're gonna try next. Jenny is gonna help us. Oh, La this Sophia. Is La Sophia. Wow. Okay, tell this us about La Sophia. 100% caps off. Oh, okay. 100%. I would love this one. Yeah. 125 case. And this wow. is a, if the vintage so is really exclusive. good. Very exclusive. Yes. yes. Very exclusive. So yeah. we've tried so many wines tonight. Which one would you guys, so far, because we still have La Sofia coming, which one would you say is your favorite? Okay. So far, I tried the classical, and then Espressivo. Espressivo. And now I'm trying the Fortissimo. Mm -hmm. So for my tasting palette, mm -hmm. I would go for the Fortissimo for myself. Mm. I like the... I, the high acidity and also the tannin that it grasps onto my to my palate. I just love that. Mm. Yes. Beautiful. I, I can't explain it, but I that just like grasps to my palate. So yes. I go for fortissimo. Cheers. Yes. How about you, Marco? Which one's your favorite so far? So far, I have tried seven different wines. 
four whites, three reds, <laughs> and I'm expecting to uh, try three more reds. They're and, underway. They're and you're not drunk yet. One more. One more red. That's it. No That's, more red. Oh. No, you already you had, had you the six. You already had the six red. <laughs> okay, he is drunk already. <laughs> so I'm still sober. I have tried nine different wines. Four whites. No. Three whites, Three whites, one rosé, and six, six reds. Yes. Is that ten? Yes. Okay, we got ten. <laughs> and eleventh, it's on its way. I would say my most favorite was so far. Like even though I like all of them, they all like uh, have been very refreshing. They've been good. They're complex. Like Sean's wines, like all of all of his wines are Thank great. You. Yes. But the ones I think probably I'll pick. Like we tried the red from uh, Level Pen prior to La Estella. The third one, the one Rutouche. on the right, yeah. Rutouche. Yeah. I would say Rutouche was number one, uh, my number one favorite so yes. far. Yes, okay. But these wines are seriously <laughs> are close to my heart. They all have their own character, their own style. Obviously wine is about your palate. Yes. So you go with what your favorite yeah. is. For me, because all these wines different, uh, present different style, I enjoy them all, but Rotouche, La Sofia, Fortissimo, uh, so uh, Spersivo, they all have a like home in my home. Uh, you know, first I want to thank Sean for giving us this very, very exclusive wine tasting. He showed us the best of the best of Okanagan wine. And I don't know, it's tough. It's tough to choose. Thank you. I, you know, I'd say from La Stella, I like the Espressivo and the Fortissimo. I still haven't decided which one I like more. And from La Vampin, I like the um, the last two, which is Retouche and the La Grande... La Grande Vampin. Those are yes, white. Yes, La Grande Vampin. Yeah, they took those the are, yeah. Those are both equally good. Thank you. I think the white... The white, I probably like the Vivas, the Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio. But it's tough to choose. Don't make me choose. It's like no, choosing no. a motorbike. I can't choose them. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to have all of them. <laughs> and that's life, right? You can have all of this. Of course. <laughs> Thank you so much no for problem. letting me part of your, uh, you know, tasting for tonight. And I hope you enjoy it. You oh, know, yeah. We thoroughly you know, enjoy it. We only sell wine. No t-shirt, no ice cream, <laughs> no glass. We only sell wine. <laughs> this is this is what we Perfect. do for the past 16 years. Perfect. Now we are here after 16 years. Between two binary we make more or less 16 to 20,000 case. Good vintage or bad vintage affecting the, the number of production. But we are happy because we do what we can do with, with what we got. And right. there is no addition of anything. It's pure. Mother Earth at work. Beautiful. Mother Nature at work. Beautiful. And I, I hope to see you. I hope to see you here and get to know you. Yeah. Uh, you guys are awesome. I appreciate for the opportunity. Very, very kind. Thank you so much. No, thank it. you. So if you're uh, in uh, downtown, this is on Hastings, close to Jackson, and you want some good tapas food, this is VV Lounge. You can come check it out. If you're in the Okanagan in a Soyuz, La Stella is in a Soyuz, and then La Vipin is also, is it Oliver, Soyuz or Oliver? Oliver, 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 Oliver yeah. So next city up, but very close. It's only okay. a 20 minute drive. Right? That's it. Why don't you go so yeah, there? if you're ever uh, in that area, do Did check it out. Did your five minutes? Yes, that's right. Do they 15, 20 minutes? Great, thank you. So if you like thank this- Thank you guys. Yeah, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more upcoming food and travel adventures. Oh, thank you. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. Salud. Salud. Salud.